Welcome to Mailbag, where I spend my money so you don't have to spend yours. Now I've got a whole bunch of Mailbag stuff here. Stick around and I'll show you what I purchased this time. You might want some of these things. And if you do, then there's links down below. Okay, first thing, what's in here? What is this? Curious. Ah, okay. That was actually quite quick. It's an iPhone 6 Plus screen. The reason I've got this is because a work colleague has asked me to fix this for them. It looks about right, doesn't it? Yeah, should be the right one. So, screen, and it looks like it also comes with a um, little protective case, which is a nice touch. It's nice when they send these sorts of little bonuses as well. You know, it's just a little cheap PVC soft case, but it's going to be better than nothing. So, excellent. And it also comes with a, um, a screen protector as well. Even better. So, excellent. So that's the screen. And this needs a battery as well. So I'm going to wait for the battery to turn up too. So I'll be links down below for this thing. Um, if you need an iPhone 6 Plus screen, you can see you've got a nice package here. You know, they've got a little case and a screen protector. And that's a nice little bundle. So links down below for that. Alright, what's in this one? So it's a bit of a mega mail bag. What's it got? I think 10 packages, I think it is. And these are hard drive flex cables for a MacBook Pro. So it's an 821 1492A. I've got, uh, was it five of those? I don't like the way they're, no, sorry, three of those. I'm a little bit bunched up, but it's probably okay. It needs to be for the 2012. Yes, 2012. We kinked over that one, hope that's okay. Just gently bend that back. Just squeeze it between my fingers. Yeah, so 2012 these will be for. Make a note of those, we'll forget. I purchased these thinking that I needed one for my 2012, it's a 1286, 2012 15 inch. That's what those are from, 15 inch. So um, I purchased one thing I need one. It's actually a bad hard drive. I'm actually going to do a video on that at some point. Here you go. I'll show you the drive. It's one of these AWC drives. Now these actually. Apparently do have a bit of a bad reputation. So I it's actually came with a computer I purchased a few years back. Well, about a year back. 490 gigabytes. And it just randomly stops responding. I'm actually gonna you can see I've actually already been inside it. I had a quick little look. So I actually intend to try and repair this drive if we can. I'm suspecting this is a bad solder joint somewhere. I didn't find any but I didn't microscope it, so that'd be a future video looking at this thing. Alright, what's in this one? Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, excellent. It's a Toyota key. Well, it's a blank Toyota key. Now, does it have the remote inside as well? I'm not sure. Um, let's have a look. I'll give you a bit of a backstory on this. I've now got use of my deceased mother's car, and it's a Toyota. It's quite a handy vehicle, but it only had one key. At the time, it was believed I had one key. It turns out, actually, no, it does have two keys. The other key, my brother had it. <laughs> so I purchased some blanks and some remotes and all sorts of stuff because these are transponder keys, you have to program these things with the car. And um, obviously blanks to, to be cut to suit them. So I'd have a, a second remote control key. You can see it's actually flashing. So yes, there's a remote control in there. So what I actually need to do is get the transponder program for the car and get the key cut. And obviously the remote program for the car. It's two stages, you've got a program remote, you've got a program to transponder. And then once you've got those working, then you might then you go and get the key cut that way. Um, do it in order in case you get the key cut and spend that money, and the rest of it doesn't work. You know, just one of these things. So I purchased a few different ones. There's lots of them available AliExpress, probably eBay too. So um, this is where I got this one from, Key ECU. But, yeah, I'll we'll see how it goes. I'll probably do a video on that. Actually, I've got a program this thing. Show you how to do it. Stick around for that one. So I've opened this key up because I want to have a look at something now. There's different versions of this key. This is obviously a two button one. There's also a three button version which has got another button over here. And if you look at the remotes, they actually have a third button over here. It's actually there. Push it. You see the LED lights up. Can you see it flashing? So that's like a boot release. So if I really wanted to, I could get a different housing. I don't think you can get the key part out of this. Now it's moulded in. But the um, get a different housing and 
try and activate things like boot unlock, but I don't think this vehicle's got boot unlock anyway. No, I don't think it does. So it probably doesn't actually matter. But um, just an interesting thing. You can get a two button remote and just put a third button on it if you really needed to. If you're handy with a 3D printer. Alright, what's this one? So this is one of these capacitive touch sensors. So it's got four buttons effectively. Um, so it's one, two, three, four. And it's a touch sensor and you've got uh, direct outputs. Let's have a look. Zoom in a bit. So we've got output 1, 2, 3 and 4, ground and VCC. So this is just a plain output, no encoding. Although you've got these other connections here, I'm not quite sure what those are for. Can't read them. Yeah, it's close as I can get, the camera's wobbling around. So Moto and PMB. I don't know, what do these do? There's not much information on these things. So I'm not actually sure what these are supposed to do. Yeah, I've really got no idea. Looks like those through ground, and that's just like a single pin there. Is it? Is that one pin going over there? One there as well? Yeah, I don't know. That's VCC. That side's all VCC. So, I don't know what the hell that does. <laughs> Are you a job B? Anyone got any ideas? Anyone got a data sheet on this thing? The uh, auction listing when I purchased it didn't actually say that much about it, but it's not a 224 apparently. Yeah. And it's got some LEDs here to show which indicators are on. And I believe it's 3. Point, was it 2.8 volts to 5.5 volts or something? It's supposed to work on, I remember that much. So, yeah, it's just a little thing I might play around at one time. I was originally looking at this for my um, automatic cam switching when I'm doing live streams. And I haven't got around to building anything yet, but I've got a whole bunch of these things now. I've got different versions, you know, I've got up to 16 channels. It means I can like tap a tap on these pads and change the camera views from over here instead of only going back to the computer. That kind of thing anyway. I'll be doing a project on that in the future, so if you're interested in looking at that, make sure you subscribe and uh, you'll see that video when I do it. Alright, so from RS, so it's probably some capacitors, you know what that's like. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video, see what else I've got. And I've got uh, was it four more packages after this one? Something like So stick around. Watch to the end, it helps my ratings on YouTube as well. If you watch to the end, I think I've been doing too far now. It's a bag inside a bag, is it? Yes. And yes, capacitors. Now, I don't know what I've got these for, though. What are these for? 0.33 microfarad. 433 volt, it looks like. Or 850 volt. Yeah, I don't know what these are for. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> Both the same? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I've completely forgotten what I purchased these for. It's a mystery. Maybe I was trying to fix something and I've since done it. I don't know. That probably should means I'll be waiting for these for a very long time. That's most likely what that means. Where's the invoice gone? I've lost it. Hmm. Well, I purchased these in August, so it's been nearly two months. Yeah, so I've forgotten what they're for. I. I don't know. I probably bought something else from somewhere else by now. Maybe I got them from Alien 14, like a week later. I don't know. Alright, what's in here? Well, I think I know what's in here actually. I think I've got a pretty good idea. That's right, it's a newspaper. Well protected at least, I've given that much. Star Trek Discovery Season 2. So I watched Season 1. And um, season two has come out apparently. So, okay, there's a disc. Nice. So, I'll be uh, sitting down and watching this at some point. When my wife's not around, she's not really into Star Trek. Yeah, I, I don't know what's wrong with her, I just don't understand it. Okay, next thing. Now, this, I'm going to make a prediction. My prediction is that there's two items in here, I think I know what's in here already and where they're from, which is why I'm making this prediction. Now my, my prediction is that there's some airbags, and I bet there's sealed airbags, there's quite large ones, on top. All right? And then underneath that, probably sitting on the bottom of the box down here, will be the items I've purchased with no protection underneath them, not wrapped in protection. This is my prediction. Let's see how close we are to my prediction, shall we?
Bag of silt air, bag of silt air. And they're on the bottom of no protection. Told you. <laughs> this is from PB Tech. PB Tech never packs stuff properly. I'm sure they stop it rattling around inside the box, but they don't actually protect it from getting dropped. Anyway, so it's just a couple of mice. A couple of Logitech M90 mice. Now, this is actually a mistake on my part. I've been rejigging some of my computer setup and with using some of the MacBooks I've repaired. I've done videos on those, check them in my playlist, Apple Repairs, something, wherever it is. And I needed a better mouse. One of the computers I had for the events we work at needed a better mouse. The mouse was on it was not very good. It wouldn't track across benches and stuff like that very well. Yeah, I had to use mouse pad, otherwise it wouldn't work. Anyway, these mice work quite well on just about any surface it would seem. You know, they've been quite reliable, been quite pleased with them. And I thought, oh yeah, I better get another one. Well, if I'm going to buy one, I might as well buy two and reduce the postage cost impact, right? Makes sense. Anyway, I purchased these. Five minutes later, I looked around, happened to look up, and saw that I had two of these already singly on my shelf of spares. And I had a suspicion that I had some somewhere. Yeah, and I found them after I purchased these. So now I've got three, because I've obviously used the one I needed. I've got three of these sitting around. So I'm good for mouse for a while. Mouse, mice, good for mice for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I stock up on stuff, it happens. If you're still with me, thank you very much. Your uh, sticking around helps my channel. Much appreciated, and thank you to my Patreons and my supporters as well. Really appreciate those kinds of support. Helps me to buy things from our bag and helps to keep everyone entertained, which is great for everyone. These are just some probes, which go on to... Actually, we'll get one out, won't we? I'll come back, I'll get a probe, I'll come back. Okay, so you've got that in the bag. So these are just multimeter probes. So these are really fine ones, you can get your existing probe tip. What are these, two millimeters, I think they are? I think they're two mil. And you can then shove that in there, get it lined up and shove it in there, like that. And then you've got a nice fine point, which is also insulated down the side. I think it's got some kind of, I think it's a paint or maybe some plastic sleeve, I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's insulated down the side. So if you're probing a bit of circuitry, you don't have to worry about shorting things out so much. And you can just get in there and probe stuff and nice sharp point. So this is a bit like what I've already got in a way. I've been using these, which just go on the end of a banana plug. All right. I've had these for a while, you would have seen me using these quite a bit, doing MacBook stuff. And I've actually sleeved these myself fairly recently, because I was using them and I actually slipped and shorted out something and um, it wasn't a good result. So I finally got around to sleeving them, because I had the motivation. But I'd already purchased these and I was waiting for these to arrive, and as you can see, now they've arrived. I may change to using this kind of probe, um, back to this type, and um, these little ones here, I mean I don't know they're quite long but I don't know I suppose I can do it right without being too much of a pain. Sometimes having the exposed um, probe shaft is handy because you like stick it through a hole in a board or something you leave it hanging in a, so a screw hole or something like that and you can get a ground connection that kind of thing can sometimes be quite handy but um, there's always a better way of doing that you know clip it on for example instead of being lazy about it I, I'm lazy so you know yeah so obviously there will be links down below for these things. Um, I think I've got these from... Could be, is it either AliExpress or Banggood, I can't remember which one it was. Could be either one. And um, anyway, there'll be links down below. Make sure you check those out. Came all in, that's why it's not working. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is from Jcar Electronics. Nothing too exciting. A couple of little lithium cell button batteries, you know. Some liquid electrical tape because it's getting a bit low. So put into a bag in case it pops, I suppose. Nice. Selling these days, J cars. Let's have a quick look, shall we? Robot stuff, electronic starter kits, basic electronic stuff, robot playing around, uh, soldering stuff, the alarm cable. PCB etching kit. Who does that these days? Don't really need to do that anymore. You can just if you can get a bit CAD program up and running, you can just get it made for a couple of bucks. You know, you go to JLC PCB or PCB Way or 
PCB Go Go, or all these numerous other companies that make PCBs, you can get them really cheaply these days. And obviously, you have to wait for them, so you need to quickly, you know, make it yourself. But if you're going to wait, just if you can, you know, wait for a week, why worry? Anyway, if you have handy tools to play, but yeah, I only buy things from J Cars occasionally. I used to be Dick Smiths before they disappeared, and then J Cars, Dick Smiths sort of got out of the electronics game, went to generic household appliances, and then, you know. Yeah, but this is one of the things I buy from there. Oh, it's one of these little um, capacitors. Oh dear. <laughs>